Hi, welcome to 12 Weeks to Fiscal Fitness. This is Samuel Peary with Getting Finances Done. And this week, week three, we're talking about budgeting. If you haven't listened to the podcast and the 10 Secrets to Budgeting Success, I encourage you to do that now. That talks about the, the overall concepts of budgeting. And now we're going to get into the specifics and actually creating our budget. The first step is to create this master budget. And this is really a temporary document. It's meant to help you time the flow of your funds. The reason this is important is when you first start your budget, uh, you're, you run the risk of not having the money in your account when you need it. Okay, If you haven't built up a buffer and you're not a month ahead on your expenses, then you really run that risk. So this is going to help to ensure that you have the money there when you need it. It's also going to help give you a kind of an overall picture of your general budget, making sure you have enough money to meet all your categories and that you're meeting your highest priority categories first. So let's jump right in and start uh, showing you how to use this. When you receive a paycheck, you're going to enter it here in the amount field. And you also put in the date received. And this actually isn't the date received as much as you know the general date that you receive the day that you receive the paycheck. So if you receive it on the fifth of the month, you know, put the fifth of the month in here. If you're self-employed and it's random, you know, when you receive money, then that's not so important. So you can just leave it blank. So now I'm going to allocate this money. If you can see here, left to allocate, I have all of it. So I need to start allocating. So let's go down and do that. So let's say tithing is important to me. It's, it's my f number one priority. So I'm going to put money there first. Let's say uh, power money is important because I want to meet, reach my financial goal. So I'm going to put money there. Um, I need maintenance. Uh, it's a tune of $50 this month. Let's budget my groceries. I need to eat. So you notice I'm putting in the most important categories really first. Uh, I have a gas bill due on the 6th of the month, and I can see that from my list of bills in my personal finance binder, so I'm going to put that in. I also have my cable bill due, which is larger than it probably should be, but that's okay. And then uh, I need to get to and from work, so I'm going to put the rest in gas for transportation. And as you can see, as I allocated that money, um, for one thing, I designed this spreadsheet so you always can see this left allocate, no matter how far you scroll down. This is always visible. And as I budgeted the money, it, it went down to zero. And let me just show you, just in case you didn't see it, let me delete this. And you can see I have $50 left to budget. And so I'm going to put $50 in here, and it'll zero out. So that's what I want to do. I want to zero it out. And that's basically it. Now, next month, or not next month, but next paycheck, I'm going to put that in. And I have another thousand dollars to allocate, and so I can go down and go through the same process. Now I can see the total amounts for each row here over here. Uh, now there are three ways to prioritize your, uh, you know, your expenses. The first is by timing, and I would probably look at this first as well. I mentioned that my gas bills due on the sixth of the month, and I receive this paycheck on the fifth, so I'm going to really want to make sure that I, you know, budget and allocate that money first. Um, and in fact, I'm going to put over here in the notes, this is due on the 6th. And for all of your bills, I would put that over here in the notes. So you can quickly go through and see, oh, geez, this is coming up and I need to have the money there, so I'm going to allocate it. That's the first way to prioritize an expense. The second way is by importance. And uh, you know, let's use tithing here as an example. Um, you know, Maybe just for my values, my own personal values, uh, I really value doing charitable donations. And I feel like I should do that first before anything else. And so I put my $100 there you know, first. And I might even come over here and put a number one as, as far as the priority goes. And so you can actually number them if you want. Um, this is flexible, so you do it whichever way makes sense to you. Now, the third way to prioritize is by need. Now, let's go back to grocery and look at that as an example. Let's say I've, uh, I've budgeted $500 here, and, boy, I've already budgeted all my money, and I need some extra money, and I've already run out. Well, then I look at grocery, and I say, I don't have a need for all 500 of those dollars before I get my second paycheck. Maybe I only need $100 or $200, so let's put down $200. Well, that frees up $300. I can put in other categories. And then on my next paycheck, you know, I can budget the rest if I need to. So I've budgeted that. I see the total is $500. And I can even leave a note if, if I want to that you know, I need you know, $200 for the first half and $300 for the second or whatever I want to do. So I, I can just make a note of it there. 
But that's the basic idea. Now you may find that you can't, once you go through and budget all your paychecks out, you may not have enough money to meet all your categories. If that's the case, again, using this priority, you know what is most important. And those things that kind of are at the end of the list, they may not get funded. But usually those are going to be things that are unnecessary. And, um, and so it makes it very clear. It makes that process very clear is what I'm trying to say. Well, that's it. Go ahead and create your master budget. Now, there's one last piece of housekeeping that I need to do that I want to point out, and that is the Excel spreadsheet. This is not a protected sheet. You can delete the, you know, delete the um, formulas so that they don't work. Um, so just be aware of that, and that's okay. I want you to learn how to use Excel. If you're afraid of it, don't be afraid. These are very simple. If I if I look at this cell right here, all it is is a simple formula where it's taking. Uh, equals cell D9 minus cell D79. And if I actually click on this field, I can go down and I can actually see the cells that are you know, being used to make that calculation. Don't be afraid of it. If you haven't used Excel, look at the um, calculations and get familiar with them. Um, if you mess it up, I want you to be able to fix it. So this is not meant to be a protected sheet. Um, in fact, I think protected sheets can be dangerous because they can often get broken and you don't know that they're broken and you don't know how to fix them and so you end up getting incorrect results. Now I have left a lot of room for um, extra categories down here and I've just used the standard, there's nothing magic about this. Master categories I put in this cell and I bold them and then the regular categories I'll put in the cells over here and just in regular font and so you can add more categories. If you find you need to add even more then you can actually go over here to this where they're numbered and select it with your left mouse and when you right click it you can click on insert and it'll insert um, a line. It's important you do it that way because that makes sure that these um, formulas stay intact and they'll still work properly. Um, it doesn't give you a formula over here so you would want to go to one of these cells that has a formula in it, copy it, which I usually do a control C, so I hold down control on my keyboard and click C, that copies it and then I paste it Sorry, I paste it with Control V. Oh, I lost my copy. So copy and then paste. And then you have your formula there. So that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know. It may be confusing for you if you haven't used Excel. Um, and if necessary, and if I hear the feedback that people don't know how to use Excel very well, I can do a whole tutorial on just the basics of Excel. Um, but that's a very important tool to learn how to use for your finances and budgeting. So we'll use it a lot. In that case, in any case, it's Samuel Peary from Getting Finances Done, and thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon. Later on in the week, we'll be doing the actual working budget, so stay tuned for that. Bye-bye.